Hi triathletes and welcome back to another session with Triathlon Tessa where today the video will be swim specific focus. So I'll share with you guys some knowledge regarding swimming and some tips that I've learned along the way. So please stay tuned as I share some swim specific knowledge. To accomplish something extraordinary, one must have an extraordinary dream. Ironman inspires us to reimagine our limits, to set our sights higher, to go farther than we ever have before. Ironman is a statement of excellence, passion, commitment. It is a test of physical toughness and mental strength. Ironman is about persevering, enduring, and being a part of something larger than ourselves. It shows the heights that can be achieved when we push beyond our boundaries and go the distance to earn the title Iron Man. Okay guys, so let's start off. Today I'll be sharing with you guys some swim specific knowledge. So let's first start off with a wetsuit and a swim skin. For those of you guys that do not know, a wetsuit is something that you can wear when you do open water swimming when the water temperature are very cold. So the first thing that you need to know about a wetsuit is there's different wetsuits out there and you must make sure that the wetsuit fits very snugly around your body. Otherwise, the water will just seep in and then you guys won't be as aero in the water as possible. Just remember that there should be some water coming into the wetsuit. It's not waterproof as no water will come in. The next thing that you guys need to look at, this is a very old wetsuit from Coral, but you will see that it has different types of padding between the legs and underneath the arms so if you feel a bit tight around your arms or between your legs make sure that you find a wetsuit that specifically helps you in those areas where you are a bit tight so usually the wetsuit will have a small cord at the back and this will help you to unzip the zipper by yourself just make sure that when you zip it up that it will go over and then you will put the velcro on so this is a wetsuit and please swim with your wetsuit before you use it in a race as it's very different from swimming without a wetsuit. And something important to know with wetsuits, usually they will shave you so please make sure that when you try it out in the swimming pool or in the open water that you notice which areas get shaved a lot. There's a couple of things that you can use to make the shaving less. You can use some elastoplast on the areas that get shaved or you can use some Vaseline on the areas as well or some people might prefer an anti-shaving cream I just use Bennett's Baby Bum Cream it's not as expensive as normal anti-shaving cream and I used to get the small sample bottle at a race so I'll just take the big bottle and refill it into the small one and this one will always be my swim bag then something else that you guys can use there's some dressing bandages they usually use it for burn wounds. You get two different ones. This one has a little white material area on the inside, but you get those that does not have the material on the inside. So it will come in sleeves like this, but you can buy them separately as well. And then you'll see that the, it shows you that there's two stickers that needs to be removed. First, you need to remove the one at the back. And then after that, you need to remove the one in the front. Usually you'll need someone to help you with this. So you can buy this at your local discount for between 30 and 40 rand per sheet that you can use multiple times if you cut it into pieces. Or you can buy these with the white inner material and you can use them as well. I prefer these as you won't see them and they last the gloss tend to stuck to my hair and it's very painful to remove them after an Iron Man race. So that's a couple of things that you can use when you use your wetsuit to make sure that you're not shaved. Then, Something new on the market that hasn't been on the market for that long is a swim skin. Usually when they'll tell you that the race is non-wetsuit legal, you are allowed to swim in a swim skin. You'll see the swim skin looks more or less like a tri-suit if you look at it. The material is a bit different as it's waterproof so usually this will make you a bit buoyant as well. You'll see the people that swim in Kona or the pros that swim in any race that's non-wetsuit they will put the swim skin over their triathlon suit. Once again, you can unzip it at the back and you can get ones with sleeves or ones without sleeves. These are the sleeveless ones from Hub and are very nice to use if it's not a wetsuit legal race. So you can find one of these for 
around 1,500 Rand. And if you buy a wetsuit, they range between 2,000 and 10,000 Rand, depending on which wetsuit you buy. I'll also leave a link in the description. You guys are more than welcome to go and buy second-hand wetsuits on the buy cup. They have really nice ones out there. That's actually where I bought the swim skin. So I'll put the link in the description and you guys can just follow the link. Next up, let's look at some swimming gear that you might use while swimming. So let's first start off with the cap. You'll see if you enter the race, they will give you a swim cap that has branding of that race on. So there's lots of different ones out there if you enter the race. And I usually use these in training as most of the pools will have you wear a swimming cap while you swim there. Some people like to put one cap and then their goggles and then the race cap on top. It doesn't matter. It's also down to personal preference. So make sure that you have any type of cap out there. Just make sure that it fits snugly and some of them might tear easily. So then you just need to go and replace them. Then the next thing that you might need in swimming is swimming goggles. There's a couple of swimming goggles on the market. I'll first start off with the normal swimming goggles. You can get a normal pair of swimming goggles. This is the TYR Nest Pro Performance. I really like them as they have a bit bigger lens than the normal swimming goggles. You'll see this is see-through, so it won't help you against the glare of the sun, but I really like these and they have two straps at the back to tighten. Then another one that you guys can look at would be the polarized swimming goggles. This is the ones from Spurt. You'll see that the eye lens is much smaller than the one that I had from TYR. This one specifically made for swimming into the sun. You can also use this for swimming in an indoor pool. Then you can get glasses that are more open water specific. These are just some cheap Aqualine swim glasses. And these are those from Orca. You'll see that they are much bigger than the other ones. But these are made specifically for triathlon and open water swimming. Next on to kickboards, you'll see that there are different types of kickboards out there. I have two different ones. The regular ones that you can buy at Mr. Price that you can put your hands in and use for swimming. Or ones that you can actually put your hands on and your arms rest at the back. So once again, you can buy the one that you prefer. We usually only use the kickboards when we focus specifically on our kicking and you want to improve our kicking. Next up will be the pool boy. You can buy this at local Mr. Price as well. This is actually a max brand one. Just make sure that when you put it on that the big part will be at the bottom. We usually use the pool boy if you want to isolate the arms or the stroke that we are doing in swimming. So the pool boy would take the kicking out of your swimming and you can just put it between your legs and that will help you float a little bit higher without you needing to think about the kick. Most people will put something around their ankles to keep their legs from moving apart. You'll see that I just use the normal inner tube of a road bike that I've cut to a specific size and just made a knot to put around my ankles. But you can buy a specific one at a local swimming shop that's specifically made for put around your ankles. But this one's very cheap as you just use an old inner tube that had a puncture in. The next, let's look at the flippers. Flippers is something that you can use to help you guys with your kick sets or also help you while swimming. If you have very stiff ankles, if you come from a run background, so the flippers is a great way for helping you to kick a bit better. It will also help you increase your distance easily as your legs wouldn't get as tired as well. Just make sure that when you buy your flippers, there's a size at the back of your flipper that will show you the shoe size that you are wearing. As you need to put your feet inside and if it's too small for you, your toes would get shaved at the top and it would be very uncomfortable swimming with flippers that are too small or too big. So just make sure that the sizing is correct. You'll also get different sizes, smaller ones and larger ones. That will also depend on what you use them for. This is just normal flippers, so it's not very small or very long and it works well for me. Then the next thing on the list would be a pair of paddles. You'll also get different types of paddles out there. You'll see that these are big ones and these are very small ones. I use them when I do my pool set. So I'll have the pool boy between my legs, either one of these two on my hands. You'll see you'll get different ones out there. Some of them would have a small fin like shape at the bottom. And this will help you when you actually try and do that correct arm movement. These don't have anything at the bottom, but they're very small. But you can also use the bigger ones 
that only go around your wrist and your finger. Once again, it will also help you make the right movements while swimming. You can either incorporate them while doing your pool sets or when you do normal swimming and you just want to build a bit strength. Then the next thing on the list would be a snorkel. You'll get different types of snorkels out there. I'll just suggest that you use one with a bit of bend on them. So a snorkel can also be used to focus just on your swim, to take out the breathing and to focus on technique. But you can also use this when you do your pool set. So you'll see that there's a small mouthpiece at the bottom that needs to go into your mouth. And then this part will go around your head and you'll put it over your head. Just make sure that you know how to breathe with a snorkel. I really struggled in the beginning and the water kept on going into my nose. So I first started off using something on my nose until one day it broke and I had to actually learn to swim without the nose clip on top of my nose. So before you use this in swimming, just go to the shallow end of the pool, put the snorkel on and put your hands on the side of the swimming pool and first make sure that you know how to breathe with the snorkel. And then lastly, let's look at some gadgets for swimming. The first thing that I want to show you guys is for those of you who go swimming and your ears are completely full of water after the swim, something that I found that worked for me is the Swimmer's Ear Cleanser. It's about 100 Rand at your local pharmacy and you can put this into your ear after you swim. That will open up your ear so it doesn't sound like water ringing in your ears the whole time. Or next, you can either if you don't want something in your ear, you can also use earplugs in your ear as well while swimming. I don't like them as it makes me a bit disorientated. If you don't know how to breathe with a snorkel, you can use the nose clip onto your nose and that will also help the water not entering your nose. But I would suggest learn to swim without the nose clip as it might easily be knocked off your nose when you're in a race. Then some new stuff on the market, you'll see that Finesse brought out an mp3 player that you can use underwater and that's more or less 3700 rand if you buy it in south africa on the web you can you can then use the mp3 player for music while swimming as well and some new tech that recently entered the market is the form swim goggles what they do is you'll see on the top of your goggle it will show you different metrics while you are swimming so it will show you your pace or your stroke rate or whatever you decide to show on your swim goggles. It's very nice as you get instant information and feedback and you know exactly how fast you are going. But if you want to buy them, they're a bit pricey. You can find them around 6,700 Rand on the web as well. So if you have a lot of money to spend, you can buy yourself a pair of form goggles. And then the second last thing I want to share with you guys is the Finesse Tempo Trainer. This is a very handy tool if you want to improve your swimming or swim a bit faster. I'll put a link in the description that will show you exactly how the Finnis Tempo Trainer works but there's three modes on the Tempo Trainer. The, I'll start off with the last one. The last one will be your stroke rate. How many strokes you'll swim per minute. So it will give a beep every time your hand needs to enter the water. So currently it's set at a stroke rate of 50 which means you need to give 50 strokes per minute. So each time it beeps your hand needs to enter the water. So it will go beep, beep 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 and this will show you how fast your arms need to move if you want to work it at stroke rate the second mode on the finesse tempo trainer is for intervals so if you want to swim 30 seconds per 25 meters that will give you two minutes per 100 meters it will beep every 30 seconds and it will tell you when you need to reach the other side of the pool if you want to decrease your time for 100 meter you can use the first option Instead of going down one second or two or three seconds per 100 meter, you can use the first option by going down less than one second per 100 or 25 meters, which is maybe a bit more realistic in the beginning as it's very steep to go down four seconds initially per 100 meters. Then the last thing I want to show you guys, something that you can use before you train or before you enter a race, just to loosen up your arms, I like to use one of these cords. You can buy them at a local swim shop as well. I just bought a Trojan resistance trainer band and then within that box I found one of these. So you can use this for warming up before you go for the swim or before your race. So once you've put it around something, there's place for your hands to snug in. You can use this to actually warm up and focus on that specific stroke. 
You also help warm up your arms before a race, so you don't need to go into the water if you're not allowed to go into the ocean before a race. Thank you for watching this video and also stay tuned for the next video where I'll share some bike specific tips as well. So please don't like and subscribe to my YouTube channel called Triathlon Tessa and you guys are more than welcome to go and join my Facebook group and Instagram as Triathlon Tessa as well. The website's up and running, you guys can go and check it out at www.triathlontessa.com So keep up the training and I'll see you guys soon.